Cobb TV. Watch your life make sense. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm really happy to see you. If there's one thing I love, it's a packed lecture hall. So you all understand me, right? Speaking in English, everybody here speaks English. The Zohar is written in Aramaic. Aramaic was the language spoken in the Middle East about 2,000 years ago. If I talk to you in Aramaic or if I read the book in Aramaic, we're not going to understand. But English you're going to get, right? Right? OK. I'm going to open this book. I'm going to translate something in English. Let's get inside. Further, he descended and struck the line. Initially, when this river rolled its waters down, Israel was in a state of perfection, for they offered up gifts and sacrifices to atone for their sins and to save their souls. Then the image of a line would descend from above, and they would see it on the altar as it trampled the bodies of the sacrifices, devouring them all, and all the dogs would fall to silence. Get it? Good. Language is a system of symbols that point to concepts, arranging them in patterns that communicate meaning. Great. But what's meaning? For us, sensation is meaning. At our core, sensation is the only thing we get or don't get about what we read. The words of every language on earth are about sensations that come from relating to objects. Even our words for emotions are only about things. If you're hungry, it's not just hungry. You're hungry for a salad. You're hungry for something. There's always a thing associated with that feeling. But what if you're expressing sensations that come from relating to forces that manage this world? Forces that aren't things, but influences you can't see. Because by definition, an influence is above or beyond the things that it influences. And what if you're writing a book? Because what you want to do is make it possible for people in this world to enter those sensations to enter those forces that can't be described by thing words. The only way to cross that dimension is to use words that you can relate to. Use words from this world, but use them and work backwards up to the world of those influences. This is what the Kabbalists did when they wrote the Zohar. They created a cross-dimensional language called the language of branches. So the world we live in is the world of outcomes. Everything we see, everything that happens here, is the result of what already happened here. Down here is time, space, and our world. People, places, things, the objects and events of this world. It includes your feelings, it includes your thoughts. This is the outside of existence, the branch level of reality. These are the forces that manage the objects. This is the inside of existence, the causal, the root level of reality. There's nothing on the branch level that isn't the direct result of an upper force. It's said there's not a blade of grass that doesn't have an angel above it that strikes it and tells it to grow. These forces, they're expressions of a single giving field of intention that never changes. And this type of intention is the only thing that can create. The branch has no power in itself. It's all just raw material. It's like the wax after the imprint of a seal. The only thing it can be is what the seal imprinted into it. Boom. It's too late. It can't change anything. The raw material, it's the will to receive. It doesn't have its own existence. It only exists as a result of the upper force. So the only way to change anything is to rise to the root level. But until I start sensing the fixed upper intention, I can't escape this world. In the Zohar, names of people, David, Sarah, Pharaoh, places, the temple, a field, things, a sin, a chariot, a lion, an angel. They're all interstates of a person, advancing from the branch to the root level. I know. We get freaked out. We get confused by our religious conditioning. It's, it's hard not to respond this way. But you've got to unlearn that response. It's like, it's like a manual on quantum physics, but we're using emotional rather than technical language because that's how we're going to connect to the upper forces with sensation, with desire, not with the mind. Okay. He descended and struck the lion. The state of Bina, the force of giving, the upper creative. Initially, when this river rolled its waters down. Reaction of the root level. 
Israel was in a state of perfection. Your desire to be connected to the upper force is able to make the connection. For they offered up gifts and sacrifices to atone for their sins and to save their souls. When you have a sincere need to rise above a part of your inner animal egoism, then the image of a lion would descend from above, and they would see it on the altar as a trample of the bodies of the sacrifices, devouring them all. Only because you want to draw closer to the upper force, to give to it rather than doing it for yourself. And all the dogs would fall to silence. And this happens despite the doubts your ego gives you. Learning this language is the same thing as rising to the upper world. By becoming inwardly like these sensations, it makes us able to know what's going to happen tomorrow. Because tomorrow is what we intended. Okay, that's it for today. Remember, you don't have to study, but you do have to learn. <laughs>